Hello, my name is Matilda and I'm a tour guide with DC by foot and welcome to Arlington National Cemetery. Arlington is one of our premier national cemeteries here in the United States. There are over 400,000 people buried here, representatives from every single war the United States has fought in, from the Revolutionary War to the present day. Uh, there are also three main sites that a lot of people come here to visit. Uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, including a changing of the guard ceremony, the gravesite of President John F. Kennedy, and Arlington House. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was founded in 1921, right after World War I, because we had a huge problem. There were all of these soldiers who were going, fighting for their country, dying for their country, yet we couldn't identify who they were. And this was a problem because we couldn't then thank and honor them with a burial with full military honors. And that's where the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier comes in. This is a place for us to honor all those unknowns who have fought and died for the United States. And one of the best things to come see it here at Arlington is a changing of the guard ceremony. It is incredibly difficult to be a tomb guard. It takes, on average, a new tomb guard 12 hours to prepare their uniform for a guard session. Uh, and the changing of the guard ceremony is mostly an inspection of that uniform to make sure it's in pristine condition and that they are able to guard that tomb with honor. What we're about to go see is the changing of the guard. Uh, this is great to see because, you know, unless you're in the military, it's pretty rare to see a military ceremony. And you'll notice that everything these men and women do is very measured and very symbolic. They take exactly 21 steps, turn, face the tomb for 21 seconds, turn, face the walkway for 21 seconds, then take another 21 steps. This is a reference to the 21 gun salute, the highest military honor. So even the way they walk is a way of honoring these unknowns. President John F. Kennedy was a man of the people. So it makes perfect sense that after his assassination in 1963, his widow, Jacqueline Kennedy, wanted to have him buried here in Arlington, a cemetery of the people. At his gravesite, there is a famous eternal flame, which is kept going by a stream of oil and a constant spark, so it never goes out, always standing vigil to the Kennedys. Later on, uh, JFK's wife, Jackie, joined him here, along with two of their children, who sadly did not survive infancy. Kennedy's three brothers are also buried or memorialized here, and we will be visiting those gravesites as well. He first came here to Arlington in 1961. Every Memorial Day, uh, the president, sorry, he first came here on official business. Uh, every Memorial Day, the president does come here and gives his Memorial Day address. After his address, Kennedy took a tour of the cemetery and he went up to the house on the hill and looked out over the beautiful view that we'll get when we go up there towards the end of the tour. And he said, I could look at this view forever. So a few years later, when he was assassinated, his wife Jackie remembered what he had said. And she decided that she wanted to have him buried here instead of in the family cemetery in Boston. Because John F. Kennedy was a man of the people, and he was stolen from the people by that assassination. So he belonged here in the people's cemetery. The exact spot was chosen because he loved that view so much. So now he's here on the hill where he does have that view forever. Arlington House was originally owned by George Washington Park Custis, the step-grandson of our first president, George Washington. But the more famous resident who lived here was a man named Robert E. Lee, famous for being the lead general of the Confederate forces during the Civil War. As soon as the war broke out in 1861, Robert E. Lee did have to flee his beloved home of Arlington, south to Richmond, to join up with the Confederacy. Shortly after he left, the Union Army did come across the Potomac River, took this place over, and used it as a military base, which is what it would be throughout the war. The soldiers staying in the home of their greatest enemy were not very respectful with his home. They sold all of, their, all of his possessions on the black market and ransacked the place. And it wouldn't be restored to, to its former glory until the 1980s, 120 years later. Today, thankfully, it is in beautiful condition and you can tour through the house and get a really good idea of what it would have been like when Robert E. Lee lived there. Uh, this was used as uh, a base throughout the Civil War, and it was justified, because you can imagine just coming over the river and taking it over, not the most legal way to acquire property. The way it was justified is that they passed a law that during the Civil War, you had to pay your taxes in person. Now, neither Robert E. Lee nor his wife, Mary, could go pay their taxes in person because they'd be arrested, kept as prisoners of war. They did try to send a cousin to go do this, but it was not accepted, and so Arlington was seized on outdue taxes of $92.00 seven cents. Thank you for visiting Arlington National Cemetery with us. If you are interested in taking one of our tours, our website is freetoursbyfoot.com.
tourismcenter.com. We do also have many other tours here in the DC area for you to check out. Uh, we have tours of the Georgetown neighborhood, the oldest neighborhood here in DC, both a historic Georgetown and a ghost of Georgetown. We also offer a Lincoln assassination tour, which goes into the story of our nation's most famous assassination and the complex plot that was behind it. And of course, we also offer tours of the National Mall, a collection of memorials which represent all the things that are most important to the United States. We hope to see you here in DC sometime soon.